What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and we have multiple stories in today's blockbuster video. The first one is that Ryan Gravenbeck wants to move away from Bayern Munich and he wants to move to the Premier League. He only started two Bundesliga games uh, this season and to be fair Bayern Munich have a world-class midfield but still they had a very up and down season and they are still in pole position to win the Bundesliga but Dortmund are just one point behind them and then mistake Dortmund could jump ahead and Gravenbeck who moved for 17 million pounds from Ajax to Bayern expected much more expected much more playing time just than just starting two games and he said that he really wants to play week in week out and that his situation has to change next season which means that he probably wants to leave uh, Bayern Munich and he said in the beginning of course I had to get used to it here a new environment new country new team new teammates everything is much faster sometimes even training sessions felt like competitions it's a top European club but you can't miss a thing and I feel like that getting used to it has been behind me for a while now so Ryan Gravenbeck now is uh, definitely up to speed with top European football. Training and playing at the top level for a year is beautiful and instructive. And I say playing, but it's mainly training. He hasn't done much playing yet. That has to change next season, he said. And then I really want to play weekly, weekly again. I haven't spoken to the club management yet, so just wait and see what happens. But it's clear that this role does not match my expectations. And that's uh, definitely the main reason why he's upset and he wants to move. And Fabrizio Mano revealed that Liverpool are particularly keen on signing Ryan Gravenbeck. He said Liverpool especially remain interested and they had a direct conversation with his agent a few days ago so they are waiting to see if the situation could change. Newcastle, Man United and Arsenal are also interested in Gravenbeck but they haven't personally talked to his agent and Newcastle are also willing to shell out uh, around 50 million euros which is around 43 million pounds. I think for Gravenbeck that's a pretty fair price. He's still only 20 years old, he has bags of potential and I think he would be a fantastic signing for Liverpool, a really good box-to-box -box midfielder with uh, loads of abilities and he can take the ball and drive forward, he has good dribbling skills, he has good stamina but he's, he should have gone to a club where he can play a lot more. I mean going to Bayern, Bayern Munich and playing and staying on the bench and playing just two starts of all season in the Bundesliga that's that's very very poor especially because you know Bayern Munich have world-class midfielders so Gravenbeck in hindsight moving there it wasn't the best decision for him maybe he should have waited another year at Ajax if no other top clubs were interested in him and I mean Liverpool are losing four midfielders this summer so Gravenbeck going to Liverpool would be a much wiser transfer move a much better decision for him maybe Gravenbeck just saw the glamour of going to Bayern Munich going to top club to the top club in the Bundesliga and he thought he's good enough to play ahead of uh, Joshua Kimmich, Thomas Müller, Musiala, Goretzka but those four players are world-class player at the peak of their careers or in the case of Müller in the second half of their career and uh, he just uh, didn't uh, play enough because Bayern are in such a tight Bundesliga race Bayern Munich were, was under pressure to win every game so let me know do you think Liverpool should sign Gravenbeck do you think a 43 million pound transfer fee is a fair price for him let me know in the comments below and of course leave a like on this video if you enjoy these transfer news updates and the, another story is that Aurelien Chouamani who we tried to sign before he went to Real Madrid for 100 million pounds he would still love to play for Liverpool in the future and uh, he actually admitted that the, he had discussions with Liverpool in the summer of 2022 but when uh, Real Madrid came calling it became clear to him that he wanted to join the biggest club in the world. Chouamani has four league assists uh, uh, this season so far and he, that's pretty good for a defensive midfielder and I, I don't see any scenario where, where Real Madrid would, would let Chouamani leave. But Liverpool Publicly and privately they um, acknowledge that uh, they would take Chouameni on loan if that's the only option that they have. They will try to get Chouameni on loan. I, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would Real Madrid loan Chouameni out? 
I mean, uh, Luka Modric and Toni Kroos, they are brilliant, but they are in the twilight of their careers. Sooner or later, their performance will decline, if that's next season or two years from now. And I mean, if, if Bellingham goes to Real Madrid, I mean, uh, Kamavinga, Bellingham, Chuamani, Valverde, that's your perfect midfield for the next like I don't know 10 years 8 years it's absolutely amazing how each season Real Madrid signed kind of a generational talent I mean four years ago they signed Valverde or something like that uh, two years ago they signed Kamavinga last season they signed uh, Chuameni and this summer they are looking to sign Jude Bellingham as well it's absolutely crazy how they are adding these world-class midfielders and I mean, this is what Liverpool need to do. Liverpool need to add to their midfield almost every summer because it's the department which absolutely is the base uh, for all the Liverpool playing style to be built upon. And if your base is not rock solid, then the whole structure crumbles. And that's what happened with Liverpool this season. Our base, the midfield, wasn't strong enough, wasn't good enough. We didn't have enough stamina. We didn't have enough guile, creativity, work rate, work ethic. A lot of top players performed way under their abilities. A lot of players were injured and, you know, probably Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool didn't expect that, didn't predict that. And we need these type of players, Chouameni, who can run all day and he's very good with the ball, without the ball. And hopefully Liverpool will sign at least three of those kind of midfielders. Because now that uh, it's confirmed that Milner is leaving alongside Naby Keita, Oxley Chamberlain and Arthur, that's four players out of eight or nine midfielders that Liverpool have that are leaving the club. So we need at least three to come in. And Liverpool have actually informed Real Madrid that they would be willing to take Chouameni on loan or as a, on a permanent transfer if he becomes available. And I mean, that's, uh, that's crazy that Liverpool are thinking uh, that Chouameni, I mean, uh, if Real Madrid would leave, would let Chouameni go one year after his transfer, they would be crazy. I think he's still developing, he's still a young player. And as I said, we, because Muka, Luka Modric and Toni Kroos will probably leave Real Madrid in one, two years, however that long it may, it may take, Chouameni is, per, is a perfect replacement for any of those two players. And also, I mean, uh, you can make maybe an argument that Real Madrid would let Chouameni on a one-year loan to Liverpool because they still think Modric and, uh, and Toni Kroos will play one more year at Real Madrid but uh, with no option to buy. Probably that's the only hope that Liverpool have, that they would let Chouameni go to Real Madrid, to Liverpool sorry, on, on a one-year loan with no option to buy him and maybe get a big loan free from a Liverpool that would make sense from a Real Madrid point of view but even I can't see that happening but that's just my personal opinion strange things have happened and Fabio Zimano is reporting that Liverpool are now close to appointing Jorg Schmatke as the new sporting director I made a detailed analysis of him and his work in yesterday's video so make sure to watch the second half of yesterday's video if you haven't already the agreement is imminent he has accepted the role of new sporting director from Wolfsburg, former Wolfsburg director will work on the project and new signings together with you and Klopp who will remain crucial in the transfer strategy and I have been personally hoping that a new sporting director will arrive quickly and he can help Liverpool complete some early business uh, in this summer transfer window. Experience in Germany should mean a new insight into possible Bundesliga talent and also a strong relationship with Julian Klopp who, was, who has already confirmed he has some say in who the new sporting director could be. And let's hope this is the start of a new and long and happy relationship between Jurgen Klopp and this uh, sporting director and that he can help Liverpool get the kind of players that Liverpool need to get back to where they should be which is challenging for the Premier League and the Champions League trophies and it, look, it looks like there is some interest in Liverpool's second choice goalkeeper Brentford and Brighton are interested in Kiwin Callagher who has been absolutely magnificent and probably Liverpool are willing to let him go if we get a good transfer fee for him 20-25 million and maybe 
they think he's too good to be second choice goalkeeper and also Kelleher probably said to Liverpool I want to play more when behind Alisson he has no chance and maybe Liverpool will get a free transfer or a, an older uh, goalkeeper like uh, Zieler from Hannover, a former Hannover goalkeeper um, that could Liverpool, cost Liverpool very little and, uh, and that way we could have uh, Maybe a little bit worse of a goalkeeper, but we can get a lot of money for Kelleher. I mean, relatively for a second choice goalkeeper, 20, 25 million is decent amount of money and we can put that towards our transfer budget. And after Mo Salah is breaking all kinds of records at Liverpool, Virgil van Dijk has said that Mo Salah should get more respect and more recognition for the consistency he is showing in front of goal and also his near constant availability for selection. This is what Van Dijk said about Mo Salah. Statistics show that Mo Salah are making history and, and we shouldn't forget, he's just playing as a winger. He's not an out and out striker. So that's also quite rare to score so many goals in that position from out wide. There is so much work that goes on behind the scenes at the AXA training center for Mo Salah in this case but it goes for a lot of players that nobody really sees the work that is going on behind the scenes for him to be fit for 97% of the Premier League and Champions League games that's maybe the most difficult thing along with staying consistent each and every game he's doing it consistently even when we are struggling he has still found a way to be important for the team being consistent every three or four days obviously you can have games where you don't score but you can reach that level and also stay fit that's the most difficult thing to do people don't really speak about those kind of things too much but maybe we should on top of that his numbers speak for themselves in the world we live in nowadays maybe the respect comes after he has stopped playing and even Jurgen Klopp said that people don't recognize and don't respect and don't give enough credit to Mo Salah while he is playing but as soon as he retires or leaves Liverpool he will get tons of praise and tons of respect but he should get that right now when he's playing because he's breaking records he's being one of the most prolific and one of the best Liverpool forwards have we have ever seen and he's not a striker it was incredible that Steven Gerrard got to 186 goals as a midfielder but he played like almost 700 games Mo Salah has one goal every 1.6 games which is which is absolutely crazy he's basically almost scoring two goals every three games it's out of this world to could to do that for a consistent period of like 300 350 games plus he gets like half uh, as many assists as goals which is crazy which means that in almost every game he either scores or gets an assist which is unheard of uh, in Liverpool history it's absolutely insane and he is my favorite player and he's getting close to being my all-time favorite player Steven Gerrard was and still is my favorite player but I mean Mo Salah getting in 302 games 186 goals and 69 assists that's crazy honestly absolutely mind-blowing it's like almost 200, uh, around 250 assists and goals combined in 300 games it, that's absolutely out of this world absolutely mind-blowing and also to have four seasons out of six with at least 30 goals per season is also absolutely insane and I mean only Ian Rush had seasons with like Mo Salah where he scored like uh, more than 30 goals in a lot of seasons I mean he has one two three four five seasons Ian Rush had where he scored at least 30 goals per season and just to compare Michael Owen has never had a season where he scored 30 goals the best he could do was uh, 28 Roger Hunt had a season where he scored 42 goals and uh, he also had one two three four other seasons where he scored 30 goals so Roger, Roger Hunt is definitely up there with his goal scoring ratio Gordon Hodgson had uh, one two See two seasons where he scored more than 30 goals uh, so this this means that Salah is just uh, up there Billy Lidl only two seasons where he scored 
uh, more than 30 goals. And yeah, Robbie Fowler also had three seasons where he scored more than 30 goals. Uh, but So Salah with uh, four seasons of uh, 30 goals or more is absolutely outstanding. I mean, Kenny Dalglish had one season, his first season, where he scored uh, 31 goals. And the rest he, as I say, only scored like 25 or less goals but Salah is having an absolutely amazing season once again and I really really hope that he can fire Liverpool to the top four. We need Man United to keep faltering, to keep uh, dropping points and they are not in great form and Liverpool have hit form at the right time of the season so we are still in with a small chance of uh, finishing in the top four and Kolo Toure also offered us a unique insight into Jurgen Klopp's man management skills he said in terms of another Liverpool icon I was at the club for the beginning of the Jurgen Klopp era his man management is incredible I have to say I was really surprised with how he managed players players who don't play players who did play everybody was happy being able to manage 25 players and still make them feel part of the project is an incredible skill I've tried to take that into my coaching career now the first time you shake his hand you feel somebody really warm there is no trying to be something he's not he's a natural man with his stretcher physically and in the game you think you're going to see somebody very serious or someone to be scared of but no not at all he makes you feel like you are a friend he tries to show you you are part of his family and that's I think a very unique and very good insight from from Colo Toure on what kind of uh, player and what kind of manager, sorry, Jurgen Klopp uh, is uh, still right now. And Liverpool are eyeing goalkeeper, uh, German goalkeeper Zieler for homegrown boost. According to Bill, Liverpool are keeping a keen uh, eye on Hannover goalkeeper Ron Robert Zieler, who is 35, 34 years old, sorry. He's very experienced. They want to bolster their homegrown, homegrown player numbers because uh, Milner is leaving, Oxley chamberlain leaving, uh, two homegrown players leaving Liverpool. So Liverpool need... Um, more homegrown players and Zilar could be one of those. So I will keep this uh, story um, being updated as soon as something else happens but uh, you know an experienced second choice goalkeeper is needed if Kelleher is sold at Liverpool that's definitely true and thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this video have a lovely day see you later goodbye